the podcast, podcast is ready. ready. You jumped ahead of me. I'm sorry. <laughs> you started without me. We've been doing this for six weeks, and we still have no synchrony. <laughs> no, we don't. We whatever. don't. You would think after six weeks we would have figured this out, but uh, clearly, <sighs> just clearly a not. Bit. No, I, th- we I think haven't. we're just suffering from that six-week uh, long haul of just we're basically, social distancing. We're basically a married couple at this point. Sure, we can go with that. That's I don't know fine. how your wife is going to feel about Welcome that. Welcome to Malika and I's marriage. Yeah. How's it going? I'm the adopted child. You Welcome were our to the son show. for a little bit, but now you're just a part of the family. Yeah. In yeah. another way. The dog is my brother now. I've accepted my fate. Yeah. Well, welcome everyone to Hyper <laughs> RPG. Uh, we are a group of nerds streaming every day f- live to you from social isolation in our garage. Hopefully bringing you happiness, joy, and some entertainment. We hope. <laughs> we hope. Uh, thank you all for joining us. We appreciate you being in the audience so much because it means the world to us that you would share your time with us in such crazy times right now Mm -hmm. uh, all over the world and we appreciate so much hearing your input and you sharing your stories with us one of my favorite things every single day is hearing from you all how things are going where you live how your life is and sharing those experiences with us it it helps us keep like an overall better world perspective yeah some perspective we're in this garage for so many hours out of the day and we're in a garage we, we only get know. to yeah we only get to watch the news for so much uh, for so much time so being able to hear from other people and get to know you know how everybody's doing is very important i think to everybody but we have a very very special guest joining us today um and <laughs> I'm I'm trying really hard not to geek out. I don't geek out that often, but uh, one of my absolute favorite favorite characters from The Expanse, uh, who plays Christian Avasarila, uh, Shore Agdashlu. Thank you so so much for joining us today. Uh, uh, in the middle of all this crazy, very much appreciated. Yes. yeah yeah i'm gonna make a note for that (laughs) i I gotta i don't even have things to write with we're (laughs) we're a mess here we're a mess (laughs) just an absolute was asking me to tell her to study Santur, uh, the Persian instrument, because it has a nicer sort of tune into it. Mm. Drum was too harsh for my mother. But she (laughs) literally lived in the garage for almost three months. Wow. Yeah. We're, and we're now living in a garage for uh, six weeks. It's six been a while. Six weeks without <laughs> leaving. Uh, and uh, just a quick reminder to everybody who might be tuning in, uh, because we are practicing safe social distancing here at Hyper RPG, we have no crew. Yeah. Uh, we are it. We are the crew. We are the crew. We are on camera and we're also the crew. So we're going to be doing our best to give you the best quality show we possibly can. But we also have no one to tell us when things are wrong except you and the audience. So if something seems weird or something's up, let us know and we'll, we'll address fix it. it immediately. Yeah. Because we're on our own here, like yeah. everybody. But we're <laughs> all right. in this together. <laughs> we can get through this together. And the first thing I want to ask you, Shore, how are you doing? Are you, like, how, how are you? I'm really doing fine. <clears throat> Thank God. I never had a, such a long vacation. Oh, wow. In my entire life, at least for 30 years. Usually I would just get 15 days. Mm-hmm. It's been months now. And I have time to do my chores at home, um, pay attention to my family at home, read, write. I've started my second book now. I wrote my memoirs almost four years ago. Wow. And I wrote, yeah, to write a sequel to it uh, as to what happened when I started working in the American film industry or so-called Hollywood. I have so many stories of Hollywood. So I've started writing that one now trying to uh, connect with all friends, uh, you know, every day, call them, ask them how they're doing. And uh, uh, it's, I've never had uh, so much time Mm -hmm. to just sit down, simply sit down and think. I think we should all practice that. I know, I really do think (laughs) we need that. Well, you and I were talking a little bit before, and I think... You know, we we're talking about traveling and stuff, and you were also talking about the fact that you've now had a chance to sit down and yeah. watch The Expanse. And I know for there's so for so many actors, that's probably the case where they'll work on a TV show or a movie, 
But because you're constantly going from project to project to project to project, you don't have time to, s I mean, even for us, like I, I don't watch as much TV as I would like to because of time. What is that experience like for you now to be able to go back and watch your own work, but also new things that you never would have had time to watch before? Have you discovered a lot of new movies and oh shows? Oh my God, yes. To be honest with you, I have to tell you the truth. I don't like watching myself. Oh, but how come you're great? <laughs> I, thank you so much. But many actors are like that. And I tell you what the reason is. Every time we watch our work, we're like, I should have done this. I could have done this. Mm -hmm. It would have been better if, if, if. Uh, it's been years that I've started teaching myself not to start thinking of what else could I have done. Just pay attention to what I'm doing. So with the expense, uh, to be honest with you, even when I had time, I would just watch it uh, like not every week because as uh, uh, Adam was suggesting, we don't have as much time. So uh, that's why uh, I never had a chance to watch it thoroughly. At this time, I started, I thought this is the time that to start watching it thoroughly and uh, see it from outside, not from within. Because when you're in something, the view is totally different than when you're out. And I started watching it and it was, to be honest with you, at first it was a bit creepy. I'm thinking, oh my God, it's we, it, uh, everything that has been happening now been suggested in episode one, yeah. season one. Uh, Adam, um, Zach was referring to the consistency of this, of this show, which again is amazing because one of my favorite scenes in uh, season one is when Abba Sarala is on the roof and her grandson joins her. Abba Sarala is watching the stars or watching the sky. The young boy says, are you afraid of the rocks? And she says, I am not afraid of the rocks. I am afraid of those who throw the rocks. And this is going on and on and the consistency of yeah. it is it's just mind-boggling, and then all the relationships and and uh, you know it's 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 been incredible uh, watching it from the from the beginning. You know what what we have done five six years ago we 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 shot this. Yeah, and it's it's just. It Incredible. holds up so well, too. We've been re-watching it with the audience at night. We started with season one. We finished uh, season one last night. And when I first found the show, I hadn't read the books yet. So I watched all of season one. Then I watched all of season two. Then I dove into the books and just plowed through them. And I didn't even realize, because it had been so long since I went back and watched season one, how many things are brought up, even that quote about the rocks, that like we haven't even seen on the show yet. And our, I know we'll probably show up in season five if you're wow. kind of tracking where things are going. It's so mm -hmm. expertly plotted out. And I just kept thinking about what an absolute shame it would have been had the show stopped at season three when so right. many things were built from the beginning to keep going in that story. And I, I wanted to ask you a little bit, like, what's it like to be a part of something that's so special to so many people that I feel like in a lot of ways the audience rallying behind the show helped – kind of put Amazon in a position to want to even pick it up. What's it like to be a part of something like that? Honestly, it's larger than life. Uh, and I really mean it. Had I not been a part of the experience, I would have never, ever experienced the impact that fans can have on the show, the supporters of the show, what they can do for the show, uh, their, their kind words, their supports, their gifts. I have never ever received so many gifts for other shows except for this one mm -hmm. and their their messages it's incredible it is as though uh we're, we're we're working with these we're all we're all one family uh at one point uh, the, the number five million was mentioned that we have literally speaking five million followers so it it feels really overwhelming for a real actress from the middle east who came all the way here to be able to tell the story together. So I, for one, I'm enjoying it so much because I had no idea what fans can do. Mm -hmm. When the show was canceled, uh, since I'm the older one and I have lived long enough to know that when a chapter closes, another chapter opens. So I wasn't 
as um, sad or as devastated as my young colleagues. But uh, uh, when I, and especially when I talked to Stephen, and in his gentle voice, he told me, sure, it is what it is. And I said, of course it is what it is. We're going to take it, no matter what. It's a pity because it's really a future story that should be told now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so people would see how the future would look like, but uh, it's a pity. Uh, two days later, I'm sitting at home receiving this uh, um, message with a picture of a balloon, a message hanging on to it saying, save the expanse. And I called my colleagues and I said, who's doing this? Because I knew we were not doing it. And I was told that it's the fans. They put their dollars, their pennies. It, it really makes me feel like crying together. And they send a balloon up. And I don't know if it's a rumor or not. They asked the balloon to go around the Amazon's headquarter. <laughs> so I would see it. And according to my uh, imagination, uh, when they did this, Mr. Pesos was on the phone and was talking to someone. And all <laughs> He saw the the banner and he was like, what? No, <laughs> we're not going to let this show. I want to see the rest of the show. So he calls in and says, I want to see the rest of the show, which we're thankful to you for the rest of our lives. It's an amazing show. And from what I understand on social media, uh, it appears that like season five's already been shot and uh, there's discussion about even possibly releasing it early, uh, yes. which I don't think... Um, I, I couldn't find anywhere if Amazon had officially yeah, said that. I, I know there's been. I don't think there's, there's like anything just a official. lot of social media rumors around it. Um, yes. But you already have season five in the can. Um, yes. What was it like to come back for season four, where the show almost feels like, in a new ways, it's a new network, and it felt like a great jumping on point and almost a new branch of the story. And uh, what's it like going from season four into season five for your character and just the show in general? It's, in, it's interesting. What a great question. <clears throat> in terms of storytelling, acting, uh, we were, it was just all the same. It was like we're back to pick something up that we left off like a year before, a couple of months before. But in terms of uh, using advanced technological gadgets, better CGI, of course, it made, it made a lot of difference after we moved with amazon yes you you, you can imagine what yeah. can happen yeah the <laughs> the effects jumped up so exactly. quickly yeah it, it looked so good i, I really I remember, I remember when we watched season four usually when we finish shooting a season they show us either two or, or the first two or the first four episodes of the one that we've just shot and I remember after watching the first two of season four, I said, I love the CGI. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, okay, okay. We understand what you're referring to. Yeah, I, I really like the choice in season four. Everything in space is full screen. Mm -hmm. But when they go to the mm -hmm. planet, the aspect ratio changes. It's widescreen. It's, and it's extra wide. Mm -hmm. to get, it's, it's weird. By limiting the frame, it made it feel more expansive. You know, like when you're in space, you're trapped in the box. But when they're on the planet, like by shifting to widescreen, even though the frame's getting smaller, the shots are a lot wider. You feel like like them. You're experiencing this planet mm -hmm. for the first time. Like uh, uh, such a great transition of uh, Naomi getting off the ship and on the planet. I um, love that. I love that scene. It's just it's incredible. I get a chill every time I watch that scene. It's like going back to your birth country after 50 years. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. shifting gears a little bit, let's talk a little about your experience working in video games. Uh, yes. Some people may not know that you're a voice in Mass Effect and also a voice in Destiny. What's that experience like? It feels like you're, you're becoming a member of all these shows that have the most beloved fan bases and video games as well. I, Mass Effect was my first uh, experience, and I portrayed... Uh, Admiral Shala Vance uh, Tanabe. And uh, it was my first experience, not only with the video games, but with uh, um, telling a science fiction story or, or a futuristic story. Before that, I had, I, it was just the uh, X-Men 
that I had a, a glance of uh, of what is going, what is the futuristic work mm -hmm. uh, could look like, but never been a part of it until the Mass Effect. And what I loved about the Mass Effect was not just the story that uh, fighting with the aliens and trying to, uh, you know, uh, save Mother Earth, which almost the same theme in every uh, futuristic piece that I have so far seen. But also, they got me act. They put a camera in the uh, booth where I was reading the lines, and they asked me to move around while running my lines as Admiral Watanabe, and act as as as, as though uh, I'm acting on on a uh, uh, you know, camera. So I did that, and I truly enjoyed it because my hands were free. I I have to uh, tell you that I, I read books and tapes. It's the hardest job on the face of the earth for me because uh, English is my second language. Reading those books like Cortesio Malaparte or or American uh, you know writers or South American writers, I have to put my hands and they uh, you know where, where we. Uh, do all of these things in the studios nowadays, as I'm sure you know, are very sensitive to every noise. So I have to put my hands under my lap and then I start like this. I start reading the book so I wouldn't make a move. But with this one, they allowed me to portray uh, Admiral Watanabe and I'm like, you come here. I'm asking you not to do that. And I enjoyed it so much. And they were like, uh, Afterwards, they told me, you were really enjoying yourself, weren't you? And of course I were, because this is my first time. And I love video games. Love being a part of the future. Awesome. Would you say, would you say that in relation from you know, doing voiceover work, from traditional acting, is it a little bit more freeing because you can kind of be a lot more animated? That's right. A lot more animated because we're talking video games or uh, similar to it, we're talking animations or cartoons that I, I love to do and I do. Uh, but in, in uh, being on camera uh, needs at least two and a half hours of prepping. Hair, makeup, uh, costumes, uh, you're very limited in your space. They Sometimes they ask you not to even turn around to talk to your uh, partner because the shades uh, are not right. So you need to talk, you know, just look to the front and talk to your colleague and stuff. But in this one, I was free. I was going from one side to the other, doing whatever I felt like doing. Because I knew that they're not going to use all of the movements. They were just uh, obviously needed the, this as a piece of, you know, as, as an inspiring piece when they were making the, the character. So jumping back to The Expanse, we, we put out uh, on Twitter, we said, does anyone have any questions? And of course, the number one question that everyone asks and immediately jumps to is your outfits. Yes. And, uh, you know, can you give us a little bit of behind the scenes process of what the show goes through to make your outfits? And a lot of people wanted to know if you were able to take any of them for yourself afterwards. <laughs> No, unfortunately, I can't take any of them. Most probably they will go to the uh, museum of the um, Television Academy or the Academy's museum. Uh, they're really museum pieces. I don't get to bring them home. <laughs> uh, our, our amazing Joanne Henson, design, our designer, Miss Joanne Henson, she is incredible. She is unbelievable. We've been so lucky to have her, usually these kind of designers work with blockbusters. But I guess this uh, TV uh, series was happening in her own hometown. She's from Toronto and she lives there and that's why she joined us. She's amazing. Day one, when I went to meet her, uh, she showed me a couple of costumes and she said, of course, I would love to have your input in it. And I said, uh, thank you so much. You're so humble. Uh, I would love to have if, if, if there is anything, I would love to share it with you. First scene, uh, first season, there was a dangerous scene. So I went to her and I said, Joanne, I love Alfred Hitchcock for using certain colors in certain scenes in his films. 
uh, colors meant a lot to Hitchcock. And he used them very cautiously and very rightfully. So every time there's in, in Hitchcock's movies, every time we're, we're about something dangerous is about to happen, we see a shade of red here and there. And sometimes, you know, the whole, I mean, we see a huge piece of red. But it's sort of, Hitchcock is, is uh, playing with us. It's, uh, for those who are familiar with his works and are his fans, it's like, oh, oh, wait, something dangerous is about to happen. Mm -hmm. So I said, John, do you think we can add a little bit of red into these costumes? And she said, because it's getting dangerous now. And she said, that's a great idea. Immediately, she added a, uh, a ribbon of um, a velvet ribbon uh, to, the, to the necklace, red, and uh, to the handcuffs. That looked perfect. So uh, as of then, every time she would just uh, uh, design the costumes, call me in, we would go through the costumes, anything necessary, we would just add or take off. And it's, you know, I'm, I am an artist who believes in collaborations. I am not Van Dyke or Van Eyck mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, Netherlands, sitting in my own home in the middle of snow, the painting. This is not a one-man show. Television, uh, cinema, theatre, these are uh, collaborative arts. And that's why I want to be a part of it, because I love people and I want to collaborate. So uh, we collaborate a lot. But something funny about the, uh, my costumes and, and uh, what happened at the end was after I tried to, and those beautiful saris, she orders the saris, the fabrics from India, from all over the world. These are, some, some of them are very expensive. But they're worth it because they're they're just gorgeous and they read really well on the screen. After I wore the sari and they did my hair uh, beautifully, you know, very very nice. Uh, John said, "So, what kind of shoes would you like to choose?" And I said, "A pair of Doc Martin boots." <laughs> and she said, "Doc Martin, you want to wear boots?" And I said, "Yes, John. She's a soldier. No matter what." Uh, in season one, Frank tells her, do you remember you were always a runner-up? Every time you and the boys ran, you met a, a target earlier than any of them. She was a runner-up. Mm -hmm. Then she went to military. She's a soldier. No matter what, she wears boots. So we, should, we decided to go. And she said, that's a great idea. And she ordered a pair of uh, very beautiful green wash sort of uh, boots. Beautiful. Doc Martens. And then uh, I went to the set with this silk costume and the hair and everything. And the director, Terry, looked at me and said, oh, now we have to wait for you to change your shoes. <laughs> I said, no, Terry, you don't have to. <laughs> he goes, you wear boots with saris? I said, yes, it's been discussed. Eh? We discussed, we have already <laughs> talked, to, talked to Joanne. The production knows, yes, we've talked about it before. He didn't believe me. He called Joanne and said, Joanne, she's wearing boots. And she says, yeah, didn't she tell you why? And he goes, no, why? And Joanne says, because she thinks uh, Abbasarala is a soldier. And he goes, oh my God. Okay, all right then, woman, do it. Let's, let's start, let's start. We're running late. It was <laughs> yeah, but uh, every costume has its own story and where it's coming, where the fabric is coming from, how Joanne came up with a design, where the stones are coming from, and the jewelry. Yeah, the earrings. Oh. The earrings. First year, I took all my jewelries, and I reused them all. I didn't have any left. Second year, uh, Joanne decided to reach out to, to the jewelers, and uh, uh, now we're, we're uh, using you know amazing jewelries, uh, vintage, antique or, or modern jewelry from everywhere in the world. She goes through a lot to bring these, these jewelry to us, but she does it and she does a beautiful job. Well, it's just amazing how it takes a village really, yeah. getting together. And that's why I'm sometimes so surprised when actors act odd or, or they have attitude and they look weird you know when you talk to them like mm, like oh I'm, I'm so different and you're not like me and i'm different i'm like 
Well, don't do that. It takes a village <laughs> for you to shine. If your designer doesn't shine, you won't shine. If the backup doesn't shine, you won't shine. If the extra doesn't shine, you won't shine. Who do you think you are? Speaking of Christian being a soldier, uh, I, I feel like Christian Avasarala has one of the most iconic voices in TV as far as her stature and her, her grace with severity and strength and has become kind of an icon for women of color around the world, especially within our communities and just her overall strength. How much input were you allowed to give into growing that character even more? She's already very well defined in the books and I feel like you brought so much more to the table for her. What was that process like and what's it like to play a character like that? It is, uh, again, it's very um, overwhelming at the beginning. Uh, you're thinking, you're, I'm going to bring this larger than life character into life. And uh, obviously, uh, she, she's such a powerful woman, one of the richest women in the face of the earth, uh, been in politics. I remember when I first read, I, I refused to re read the books because I didn't know what happens next. I thought if in real life they tell me I'm going to die in a month, all my acts are going to be different. I'm going to act differently. So I don't want to know what the future is, but I would like to know how she's been described in the book. Uh, second book, by the way, she's not in the first novel, but uh, for the producers and the directors to be able to bring me into uh, the first season, they borrowed from other books to bring me from the to the first season. Uh, start, you know, from the beginning. And uh, on the second book, chapter five, Avasarala enters. Uh, his, her description is that she is extremely educated, very well read, coming from a tribe of politicians. She knows everybody in politics by their names and their ranks, and she knows who's sleeping with who. So I'm thinking, oh my God, this woman is incredible. She must be dedicated to her to her work. And with later on, which she proved it to me. She, on, I believe it's on uh, uh, season three when she claims that she's a public servant. Mm -hmm. And when I read the line, it's I love that monologue when she's scolding uh, um, her her uh, colleague who's been betraying her and uh, uh, Enright, when she's escorting Enright, she says, I know why you're doing this or why uh, some people do this. It's because some poor public servant who are looking for a payoff from a private sector at the end of the day. And I, I, I couldn't wait to go on the set and run this line because I agree with it 100% as myself, you know, and it was every night, every day at the, at the beginning, it was harder, of course, all my life. Uh, when I decided to live in Toronto six months to portray this role, everybody told me, you want to be away from home six months alone? Uh, you can, you know, you can travel back and forth and play this role. And I said, no, 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 no. I need to live with her. I need to study her. I need to take her to bed with me and mm -hmm. sleep and think. So I, I, I literally stay in Canada. I live in Canada six months a year because I just don't want to get involved with any other thing when I am portraying Avasarala or when I am acting in The Expanse. That's how precious and important this role is to me. And sometimes, you know, uh, I remember uh, for a scene, I had to, uh, I was... Oh, oh. <laughs> I remember uh, uh, for a scene where I had to uh, make a decision the day after, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the bedroom, uh, in the bed, I had uh, three nights I thought about which color I should wear, uh, a nightgown, uh, which color I should wear in the bed, uh, off-white, gray, or pink. Pink is suggestive. So... No woman who's making a, an important decision in that scale, uh, a, a universal decision, would wear pink. 
next to her husband <laughs> on such a night. Gray is grim. It's like she's not sure of what she's doing. Off-white is mutual. Off-white is mutual and it feels like, she feels like a canvas and then she can write on it. She can make a decision. It took me three nights. <laughs> but it's, it's amazing that the amount of detail and attention was put into that. And we talk about it a lot on the show with, with people we're interviewing. You know, when you're watching something on TV or a movie, everything is a choice. And, mm -hmm. and there's so many people coming together to make these choices that everything is a choice. And that's why sometimes when you watch certain things, you're like, I can't believe who would have made that choice. But someone had to make it. And it, it's phenomenal to see how much time and effort you're putting into that character. Do mm -hmm. you feel like, because when you were cast, they were still writing books? Um, do you feel like you've been able to bring things to that character that they've gone back and kind of pushed more into the books as well? Like you've added to that character for the long term? I, I believe so. First two years, uh, uh, lines were, 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 I mean, we have brilliant writers, I mean, who are writing, uh, you know, who, whose sources are um, seven or eight amazing novels, James S. A. Corey's novels. So, it's, uh, it, it, it looks hard, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the first two years, it was like, okay, uh, this woman is saying these things and, okay. But after, on the third year, I felt like, oh, the way she talks is more like I talk. <laughs> so I went to Ty, uh, Ty Frank, one of the James S.A. Corey's, Ty and Daniel write these novels, these amazing novels. So I went to Ty and I said, Ty, I feel like our writers are, are writing for me now. And he goes, well, they started long ago. You realize it now? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I guess no matter what, it, it, it does happen. Writers who are writing for a character and working with a character for several years uh, see the actor sort of becoming the character, it's easier for them to imagine what kind of lines she can run or, or, or how powerful she can get. When on season three, I almost uh, shouted on, on Aaron Wright uh, after we did uh, three takes. Mm -hmm. After the, the third take, uh, I came out and I looked at the people on the, uh, on the set, everybody was like, oh. Like, and I said, were you afraid of me? He said, yes, you were shouting and we were so afraid of you. And I thought, huh, interesting. So obviously, when writers see I can do this, the next time they write for me, they try to bring it back. Something. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. We had another question uh, that came from one of our audience members wanting to know how you choose your roles and what you look for in a character to play. Uh, interesting. I have to tell you something. I was uh, having a uh, meeting at the Universal and uh, going through the corridors, a, a young man was coming towards me and it was a hot day and he was hot. As soon as he saw me, he said, oh my God, woman, you know how to choose your characters. And I loved it. I stopped and I said, sir, believe me, I pick them up with a pair of tweezers. And we, he laughed and left, which is very true. Uh, page 16 is, is uh, the decision maker for me. I read, uh, when, when I uh, first uh, receive a script, I read to page 16. And uh, if I feel like I want to carry on, I would carry on. Otherwise, I have enough reasons not to carry on and I wouldn't, and I would politely pass on it. But what I'm looking in the story first is not about me. It's, I'm beyond that point now. Uh, and what I'm looking in the story is meaningful. If the story is meaningful, if the story makes sense to me to begin with, because I remember uh, there was a line, I, was, I wasn't comfortable with the line. And then the director asked me what the problem was. And I said, if I don't fully comprehend this line, I cannot relay it. So it's better we come up with a line or change, you know, bits and pieces here and there and make it my own rather than 
trying to just relay something that I do not fashion. Speaking of lines that you can make your own, uh, the next question we had from an audience member right into it, uh, their question was, how many times did you recall having to deliver this line? And the line that they posted a gif of is, whatever I goddamn like, uh, which is, I think, a lot of people's favorite moment of Christian Alvisar lives on the expanse. Um, was there any ad lib there? Was anything you brought to the line yourself? Or was that from the page directly out of your mouth? No, honestly, there was no ad lib. But to be honest with you, every time I watch that scene, I'm wondering, where did that one come Where did that one come from? <laughs> because we were... We were rehearsing this scene, and it was a very difficult scene. There were almost uh, more than 30 people in the scene. Uh, uh, Mars and, and Earth are having a meeting where uh, eight principals are, are looking at each other. We have Frankie right in the middle. So we had to uh, rehearse this scene first over and over and over and over again. And uh, I have a sort of ADD. Uh, when when I when I need to do something, I need to do it right away. So, I I guess I had uh, you know rehearsed this too long. So, on the actual uh, uh, shoot, uh, when he said, "Excuse me, madam, where are you going with these questions?" I guess because I of the fact that I'd been waiting too long, I said, "Where were I? God damn like." <laughs> Where did this come from? <laughs> the, director, the director came and said, loved it, perfect. How come? I said, I don't know, maybe because we were waiting for this thing to happen for so long and we rehearsed it for a long time. And wherever I got, I'm like. <laughs> I want to commend you for your memory. I feel like I can't remember last week. And you have such ex just perfect details of every question we've asked and such insight into everything, uh, which shows such a great... I don't want to boast about it, but I have a good memory. I really have a good memory. It, but my colleagues are very happy with me. I don't have to ask for lines. When I go on the set, I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I'm like, what did we do last week? I don't, I don't remember at all. And then we no, had... I tell, you, I tell you the truth. This is what, if any uh, actors are listening to us, Please do not memorize your lines. It's the biggest mistakes some actors make. It, we have short memories. Human beings have short memories. Bla uh, uh, memorizing your lines, well, you may forget it. Try to understand your lines. Try to understand what you are saying. That's great advice. It's I feel true. like we're getting so much good. We're learning a lot from yeah. you. Thank you. I feel like we should be paying you for this master class. <laughs> so <laughs> you're giving us so much. Uh, we had a fun question from an audience member saying, what are some of the best bloopers that happened in season four while filming on set? Season four. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's really interesting. Uh, uh, after season four, I noticed that they were uh, at the rap party. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have cash cold. At the rap party, they were showing us uh, teasers from from the bloopers from from uh, from the set, and I wasn't in it. And I thought, my God, next time when we do this, I try, I would do it purposefully. So <laughs> uh, I have none, unfortunately, <laughs> except for a scene that. I ran my lines, and then I sit abruptly. And that's it. And I'm like, well, no, 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 no. I see others trying to ask for lines, line, or they say something, they make a mistake, and they go, <laughs> they laugh. Or I love the Frankies uh, one. Uh, I, be, 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 but, I, something is in the air, God knows. And she goes, <laughs> and I loved it. I don't have any. I'm, I'm so proper. I shouldn't be. Next time, I'm going to let myself go and make some mistakes. So <laughs> they, can, they can put me there as well. Oh, too serious. <laughs> One shouldn't be too serious. Life's too short. Life's too short. <laughs> and no, the problem is, tell you the truth, when I go on the set, I was a lazy soldier. So am I. I'm a soldier too. And that's why I'm, when I'm working, I'm not thinking of anything else. I'm just, just deliver, just mm -hmm. deliver, sorry, just deliver. And it's interesting. Uh, 
season three, I was done. Uh, and uh, there's a, a church nearby, St. James Church. I, I go there sometimes and I, uh, I didn't know there's a word for it, bibliomania, meaning that you open the Bible, you read the page and you take it as a sign. So I went there, opened the Bible and the Bible said, you're a soldier. Do not take off your boots. <laughs> Keep off your boots. And I'm thinking, what's the message? What is the message? What, what, I've done, I'm, I'm finished. I'm going home. Day after, I had a call from the production. We have a reshoot. We missed something. Yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, you know, you, can, you cannot take it seriously. I mean, yeah. Well, I have one more question uh, that you may not know what I'm talking about at all. So it's just a nerd question for me. Has uh, Dominique Tipper been able to convince you to play Dungeons and Dragons yet? Because I know there was a whole thread on social media about how she was going to try to get the whole crew of The Expanse to play D&D together. Tell you the, to tell you the truth, we do whatever Dominique asks us. <laughs> <laughs> we love Dominique. So we'll see. Well, we'll it, see. If you guys ever need a place, that's what we do. <laughs> that's all we do. That's our specialty. That's all we anyway, do. Then we can do it together. By the way, I invite you to come to the set, please. I would love that. <laughs> He's, he already we're left. <laughs> what you don't see is my heart is on the floor right now. Uh, I'm doing my best to not show any emotional response to that statement. <laughs> What's wrong with emotions? It's beautiful getting emotional. Ah. But... Uh, I tell you this Stop. Truth, honestly, <laughs> from the bottom of my heart, I invite you to come to the set. We put a space suit on you. We take you on a tour. We do whatever. He's coming. He's, coming. <laughs> He's already left. He's left. He's out the building. <laughs> I think a little piece of him just died and went to heaven. <laughs> we, still, we still have a couple of months. We still have a couple of months. We start in the winter. This is going to be the most I've ever blushed on camera. And if you know my, if you know my wife, uh, which... You know, people she's watching do. <laughs> she's made me blush a lot on camera, but that's just <sighs> thank you so much for that uh, generous, nice generous. <sighs> Adam, you got an interview to do. <laughs> <laughs> you've broken him. You've broken him for the rest of the day. I don't know how he's going to recover from You're this. Officially invited. You're officially invited to the expanse. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we loved. <laughs> Adam, do you have more questions? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually would like to ask something. So, Expanse, Expanse is a more recent show, but years ago you did X Men. That's right. And yes. then following X Men, you know, you did things like Mass Effect. Did those little, uh, I guess we can call them breadcrumbs, into the sci fi fantasy world? Was that a nice way to sort of help get you into sort of this like science fiction world? Or was Expanse it's very much its own thing that you just kind of had to go in fresh? Honestly, Adam, you, you said it. Th those were the little steps that brought me to the expanse. And uh, again, it was like breadcrumbs. Uh, signs. I, I look for signs every day. I'm, whatever they call it, I'm a spiritualist. So I, I do believe in science and uh, in, in Mother Universe, Mother Earth. So uh, I guess th these were all the little signs here and there. Uh, like when I did the X-Men, I'm, I'm one of those actors who love to use her imagination. You know, I think good actors, all they have at their disposal is imagination, imagination, imagination. So when they asked me to use my imagination, I really enjoy this. So uh, X-Men, uh, they take me to this huge uh, studio. No one's there. Uh, I'm standing behind a podium and I'm running a speech that it's supposed to be uh, at the... Alcatraz, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, jail. And I'm thinking, uh, oh my God, uh, okay, can you describe to me what happens in this scene? And they're like, yes, there are 300 reporters right in front of you. Uh, dozens of cameras are taking pictures of you. Your colleagues are sitting on the chairs close by and you're talking to, to the people of the world. So I'm thinking, wow. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Imagine all these things and run the monologue. So yes, yes, and that, that, and then Mass Effect, and then obviously reading every script, 
uh, learning about uh, the universe, learning about the outer planets, what is going on in there. You know, it, it's gradually and slowly, it was as though I was being prepped to, to start uh, the expanse. It's, it was it's incredible. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You got it. And sci-fi is fairly recent in the grand scheme of everything for you. You had a career overseas as well before coming to the United States. What was that transition like coming from Iran to England to the United States, all following you know your your career along the way? I tell you the truth, when I when I was done with uh, uh, when I was nominated for an Oscar. I decided to uh, um, play in uh, the TV series 24. All my friends told me, no, 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 you shouldn't do that. You're an Oscar nominee. Oscar nominee does not do that. You shouldn't do that. Uh, um, TV, you know, big actors frown upon TV and stuff. And I said, no, 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 no. These are, uh, these are I'm sorry, BSs. Uh, I, I act for the sake of acting. Uh, it won't make it, the, the medium won't make a difference for me, whether I'm acting you know, in front of the camera or on the stage, or if it's a TV camera or a film camera. Still, when I act, I get my energy from the people on the set, the director, the ADs, the cinematographer, you know, uh, I, I need in people's energy when I do this. So I act for the sake of acting. In terms of acting, oh, nothing, uh, nothing uh, huge was changed. But uh, in terms of using uh, advanced technological gadgets, oh my God. I, I remember um, when we were shooting uh, um, the X-Men, they use a fan I don't know this, remember the small fans, the old fans, mm -hmm. but they use a big one that is like as big as a two-story house. Wow. Huge. And I was, I remember I was standing in front of it and I'm like, wow, look. It. And the uh, director was passing by, Brett Ratner, and he said, what are you looking at? I said, wow, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. And he goes, you don't have one of these in your countries? And I said, no, when I left, we didn't have anything like this in Iran. So in terms of uh, technological uh, you know, um, gadgets, yes, a huge difference. But in terms of acting, of course, every time I act, uh, I get to act with someone like Ben Kingsley or Keanu Reeves or Sandra Bullock, or uh, I, I, I learn from them. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can say that I learned a lot. Uh, I can say that I've learned a lot from, right. from making colleagues and you know, actors that I've worked with. And you right. brought up that yeah. you get a lot of energy from being on set and, and feeling uh, the people on set and uh, kind of feeding off that. Do you have any tips for any extroverts who might be watching uh, on how to help kind of cope with quarantine? If, if you know, if you, you sound like someone who, who gets a lot of energy out of other people's um, uh, presence, presence you know, exactly. so uh, how have you been dealing with that in quarantine and any tips you might be able to share? Well, we call it social distancing. In terms of physical distancing, our hearts could be together. We can jump online and talk to each other. We can share ideas. We can share information that may be uh, vital to bring it to the people. Uh, th th this is a great way of uh, hanging on together. We don't have to physically be next to each other. Uh, um, Nike, I remember, had an amazing slogan. Uh, Think locally, act globally. <laughs> Meaning that, especially now that we all live in a, in a global village, uh, I can sit here, think, and talk with you mm -hmm. and still get my energy from you. You just made my day, to be honest with you. Oh, you made I my year. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a pretty crappy start to the year, so this was a great, this has made my year. <laughs> no, it's been no, a good year. It's been a good year. Just I going to have fun for the rest of my life. Yeah. So every time I feel uh, sort of uh, um, isolated, 
I watch a film, I try. Last night, I watched this amazing documentary, On the Edge of Democracy. Wow, unbelievable. What a powerful documentary. So we watch a film, we watch a, a documentary, read a book. I'm reading, uh, by the way, I'm reading Adam's book now, Adam Savage. Adam mm. Savage, yeah. Every tool's a hammer. Nice. Mm. Every tool's a hammer. Amazing, amazing. So uh, I am with Adam. I don't have to be, you know, physically. Yeah. That's how. Adam because Savage, I, not this Adam. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, I didn't want you. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't want to extend the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say thank you so, so much for joining us today. Uh, for those that are watching that have not uh, been watching, and you, you just had a new movie come out on Amazon as well. Um, <laughs> I, I had it pulled up here. Uh Let's see. I'm trying to a remember. A simple wedding. Yeah, a simple wedding. That yeah. just dropped, what was it, February? February 14th, I think. 14th? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so make sure to check that out. Make sure to check out The Expanse. It's streaming on Amazon Prime mm -hmm. all four seasons right now. So if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch everything and catch up. We're going to keep doing our watch along with the audience uh, starting season two soon. But this has been absolutely wonderful. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really do feel like we should have yeah. paid for this master class. <laughs> I learned, we're learning so much from you. So thank you so much. Likewise, Miss. Thank you so much. And uh, make sure everybody to follow her on social media. And uh, because we have no crew here, uh, we're going to wave goodbye. And you're going to have to awkwardly end the call because we have <laughs> no one else that can get up and end the call. <laughs> so thank you so much. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, Adam, that was awesome. That was amazing. How she's, you doing? Oh, she's amazing. She's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, that was an amazing – it was it was such, like, great discussion, and it was just so nice to – I just really enjoy getting to know how people are doing through, through all of this stuff, and it's so great to get so much insight <clears throat> on someone who's had such a – prolific career mm -hmm. and has worked in so many different mediums and has worked in so many different genres of film. Yeah. Uh, and then you got to, got invited to go to the expanse set. So. I'm not freaking out. <laughs> I'm not freaking out. Are you okay? I was choking up. <laughs> da -da, da -da, I looked over da -da. and I saw this like gloss in his eye. I'm like, he better, he's going to start crying <laughs> in was, five seconds. I was like, is this for real? Is this, <laughs> are you for real right now? What are you doing? Are you for real right now? <laughs> I'm going to go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Just watch you slowly turn to a puddle of water. <laughs> amazing. amazing. Uh, one of my favorite actresses. She's absolutely phenomenal. We've been doing our rewatch of The Expanse right mm. now, and it's so good. Yeah. And like I said, like rewatching it from the start, we've been absolutely amazed as an audience, too, to realize all these seeds were dropped so early. Mm. Like, I, it just hats off to Amazon for picking up the show and keeping it going because it would have been an absolute disaster Shame to, to end it. Yeah, I mean, th so many things that are still building up. And mm -hmm. for those of us who've kind of read through the books, like, you know what's coming. And it's so exciting to see those things building and know where the story's going. Mm -hmm. And it's just a really, really great sci-fi show. And her character is, I think, one of the strongest in modern TV in terms of just absolutely badass character yeah so good um, but we're going to really quickly for all those that are watching we're going to really quickly run you through what we're doing today because this show this interview isn't the only thing we're doing we have a full day of content we we go live at 11 a.m and we stay live until around 10 p.m and uh it's it's a full day so we're just gonna we're gonna knock that out really quick um as you can see up on the screen we are uh currently voting as an audience for what movies we will watch next tuesday mm -hmm. and these are your picks these right, are adam? my picks baby so these are picks adam decided every day of the <laughs> week we are watching movies together as yep. a community at 6 p.m and uh we're doing these watch longs it's been one of our favorite things to do in social Yesterday isolation we did parasite which was so good oh my gosh so good. watching parasite was yeah Absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, every time we watch that movie, just just blows me away. Yeah, but today's picks, good. we've got Pan Labr Pan's Labyrinth El Labyrinto del Fauno Ooh. from Guillermo del Toro, Annihilation from Alex Garland, who if you're not watching Devs on FX, you should be watching it. It's amazing. And Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. We oh, did man. watch Raiders of the Lost Ark. I love uh, Temple of Doom. We watched it like the first week of doing our doing our watch alongs. And we had no, at no point had we decided like, oh, we should continue the series. And I thought, well, we might as well. And you actually found out when we watched Raiders that Temple of Doom is technically a prequel to Raiders Which of the I Lost never Ark. knew. I never knew growing up. I love Temple of Doom. Mm -hmm. I don't care how weird it is. It's, yeah, I, I love I that think movie. It, I, I, 
I honestly, I think Temple of Doom is the one I've seen the most out of all of them. But Annihilation is one of my favorite movies of the last five years. I feel like it's become a little bit of a challenge to pick the movies because there's a part of me that wants to just pick what uh, I want to watch. Right. But then I also like, well, what is the audience going to enjoy? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to throw two movies in there that I know people will vote for for sure. <laughs> but maybe Annihilation will creep so through. If you look at my Spotify most played, yeah. this is no joke. For 20. 18 and 2019 my number one most played album of the year mm -hmm. both years was the annihilation soundtrack because i use that to prep for Colock when i'm writing uh, when i'm trying to get creative i love that soundtrack it takes me to dark deep dark places yeah uh, i absolutely adore that movie and how good creepy sci-fi it is yeah it's one of my favorites yeah I, I think i think we're both kind of like alex garland whatever he's making we're definitely interested in seeing it yep. and i've really liked devs a lot i need to finish it i think mm -hmm. the whole season is now out and a quick reminder to everybody who may be tuning in as you saw at the end when she waved goodbye we have no crew here we are practicing safe social distancing that's extremely important to us here at hyper rpg we have been in isolation for this is week six now we take this shit very seriously but we have a full studio here so we've had to program everything here to operate from little buttons but that also means there's certain things we just can't do we don't have somebody in the back turning things on and off yeah. we're sitting at a table so there are things that will come up uh that just don't work for some reason like me having to refresh our audio source at the beginning i had to click refresh and then it worked and there was no way to know that was a problem until you all told me because on our headsets we could hear it just fine and uh, also, there was a little bit of mic feedback. Uh, yeah. That's because she was joining us from a phone. And oftentimes, when you're doing Zoom calls from a phone, when we talk, it's picking up her microphone. It's picking up its audio as well. And you get a little bit of a feedback loop there. But the interview is great. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We're, we're so doing the good. best we can. <laughs> we're not CNN. <laughs> we're not whatever. We're... We're three nerds We're living nerds. in a house. <laughs> We're doing the best we We're can. We're trying. Uh, but trying. that was an amazing interview. Uh, but coming up next on the channel, mm -hmm. after this show, Malika, uh, the CEO of Hyper RPG, is going to be making Squirtles. Bubble cake. Bubble cake. She uh, even has the glasses for it. So Malika's doing a thing now where every week you get to vote for what cosplay food combo she will make on the show. And she's going to teach you how to make it. And she's Last week, you voted for Squirtles Bubble Cake. Whatever that means, that's what you're getting. <laughs> you're getting Squirtles Bubble Cake. I think it's like one of those clear <clears throat> cake bubble things. Sure. You know? We'll go with that. When did our phone start ringing down I here? I don't know. That's a new, that's a new <laughs> that's thing. That's a new thing. That's never happened before. Uh, but if you guys want to find out how you can vote for the movies and for, for the cooking stuff for the following week, you can go to oneshot.straylogic.com. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we have the bar at the bottom, which will shift to cooking once we go over to Malika. But you can continue yeah. voting on either one of these things that you want yeah. to do. And then after that, we'll be playing I Descent, a finally. game we've tried to play for three weeks. <laughs> and hopefully we can play it finally. I've got to build some tech stuff out because I do think this is going to have some really fun audience engagement. The mm. audience is going to pick for who has the best argument. One of us will be playing a judge uh, and we'll take turns trying to basically pass a new rule. This is like a Ruth Bader Ginsburg <laughs> themed game. Nice. Like we're Supreme Court members and we have to argue on whether or not we agree or disagree with a general topic, such as uh, a hot dog is a sandwich. I would say it is. It's between two pieces of bread. I consider that a sandwich. What is happening? What are you doing? Are you sure that phone is ringing? No, I don't think so. Why does that phone ring down here? Because I, I it. She doesn't even know where the phone is. <laughs> it's up on the shelf. <laughs> Everything's fine. Situation normal. <laughs> Uh, and then every time we every time we hit a goal throughout the day, we're adding new people to Zach's clubhouse. It is round two of Zach's clubhouse. Uh, That's right. Today, every time we hit uh, a goal, which is every uh, 500 earned to keep Hyper RPG alive and well and allow us to keep making content for you and keep paying our salary employees. Because Lord knows that uh, the pay uh, the the um, Paycheck Protection Program or SBA that we applied for is definitely not going through. And as a small business, we would like to keep paying the health insurance and wages of our employees. So we do that through your contributions. And that means every time that you help us get to a goal, we'll give something back. And we're allowing people to join my clubhouse this week, which means we'll be doing something super special like a watch along or a game or something this weekend uh, when we're offline. It'll be just some like one on one time with myself mm -hmm. and a small group of people. It'll be a good time. Last cool. time we watched Tiger King. That feels like a generation ago, but it was a m <laughs> month ago. Feels like a generation, uh, like an entire 10 years ago in my life that that happened. Zach, we've got like three more weeks of this, supposedly. 
Will we make it? Yeah, will we make it? That's the question. That is that is the question. Uh, I mean, out. no, we, we are making it because of you. Uh, to true. be totally honest, I feel so fortunate. I, I got to be real with you all for a little bit. The fact that we are still able to go live every day and keep paying our employees, like Lucas, who streamed this morning, he's at home. He had COVID-19. Uh, he got his test results back, and he's no longer contagious. So we're talking about maybe bringing him back in, but he's going to get tested for the antibodies first. If he's got the antibodies... Um, he should be good to come back into work, but he's had to work from home. We want to keep paying him. I want to be able to keep paying Adam and Malika and myself health insurance as well. And we can only do that because of you all. Uh, your generous support and contributions to keep this channel alive allows us to keep going. And I cannot thank you enough for that. And I will never take this moment of my life for granted. Um, it's, it's unreal where, you know, we, <laughs> we can't, get the help we need from our government, but our community is keeping us alive. Mm -hmm. And I uh, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. I, we still have jobs because of you. Uh, so and, uh, however, you know, I could pat you on the back, whatever. And it's like, it's, I don't feel like anything I can say can, yeah. can properly express, express that gratitude and appreciation that we have for what you're doing for us. So thank you. Anything else we want to bring up today? Tonight we're watching the movie Miracle. Yeah, I love that movie so much. Yep, tonight uh, we're watching Miracle. I'm gonna I'm gonna find any excuse I can to to pop in a hockey movie uh, that's that maybe is new or interesting. I, I was almost I almost put Goon in on this week, <laughs> and I was like, I'll take a break. Yeah, one week off from hockey. Maybe one next week off. Week. Yeah, yeah. And that's on Netflix or Disney Plus. So yeah. you can watch along if you have either of those services, or if you just happen to have it on your DVD shelf. We'll be putting a timer up on screen so you can join us. Um, I don't think there's going to be any extra content tonight after Miracle because I've really got to work on some some back-end business-to-business stuff. Uh, we still have, you know, we're live more now than we've ever been, but mm -hmm. we still have work to do. So Malika, Adam, myself, we're... We get up super early. We get to work. We stay up late. Um, we still got to make sure that the company's in a good position whenever all of this hopefully one day passes. Yeah. Uh, you know, and if you enjoyed today, please do come back. Other days, we usually talk more about news topics and other things going on. Uh, but that interview We had a whole slate of stuff, but that interview was way better. Way better. Eh, than what we were going to talk about. You don't want to listen to us talk, but please come back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back here all day, every day, every until day. this is over. Every day. And beyond that. Every day. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Don't go anywhere. You're going to be seeing a couple clips and short a uh, couple things for just a little bit while Malika gets ready upstairs. And then she's going to teach you how to make one of those clear jello-like cakes. It's a cake, but it's clear. I don't know. Yeah. Science, y'all. It's a bubble cake. It's science. science. Malika wanted us to stress to you, it's science. All right? This isn't like funny business. It's, it's science. science. She was very particular about that.